Okay, and we are recording. All right, so um, I will pass it off to George to get started with our demos. Sure, thanks, I uh, appreciate it. So yeah, everybody did really good work this week. Um, you know, I was, uh, I'm actually, I'm really impressed by like how quick, quickly y'all just kind of just jump in and get right to it. Um, who wants to uh, start us off? Anybody? I'll go. Be volunteered. Okay, go for it. Um, do I just go over what what we did? Yeah, last week. Uh, so uh, yeah, you'll go over what you did. So like, idea ideally, you'll kind of have uh, one person kind of going off some of the going over some of the visual changes to the app, and the other would basically just kind of run through very briefly what the code looks like and what changes okay. were made, and then after that, we'll just kind of open it up for questions. Okay. Um, okay. I guess I'll do, yeah, I guess I'll do like the code, um, what the code looks like. Um, do I have to pull it up or does everybody just? Uh, ideally, it'd be great if we could pull it up. They should be able, should they be able to share their screens, Caitlin? I believe so. Let me confirm that. But yeah, if you can just, yeah, pull up your code um, and share your screen um, just so that we can like see what you're talking about and everything too. Um, um, share screen. Is it working? Yes. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Um, so our issue this week was pretty simple. Um, we were tasked to let the user switch um, routes. So um, uh, be able to go home, be able to go see the list and be able to add an item. Um, Really, all we had to do was add a nav link from Re React Router DOM. And instead of an A tag here, um, adding this nav link to the route that um, we needed to go to. So nav link to slash, so like the main route would send us home. Nav link to uh, slash list would be the list and nav link to slash add item would go to add item. Um, we could have done, we could have used a tags, but the benefit of using a uh, nav link is that it will add an active class. So there will be a little bit of styling added to the active um, route. Um, and I guess Caitlin can go over the styles of it. Did you want to, did you want me to share my screen or do you want to just pull it up on your oh, screen and have it open already? Uh, what was the, is the link here for the project? Um, Should be, hold on, I can send you the link if you don't have it. Okay. I can also do it I have it open. Oh, okay. Patrick, thanks for talking us through why you chose to use Navlink too. That was a helpful um, yeah. little bit of context there. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Thanks, Caitlin. It's actually a new, that's actually a new bit, bit of um, React that I actually haven't seen before. That's usually not how I've done links in the past. So. Yeah, I would have just used a regular link, like a link tag, but so yeah, there are lots. New. Yeah, no, there are tons of ways to do it. And I know like other libraries also offer like custom components for this stuff mm -hmm. as well. So all yours, Caitlin. Um, okay, so this is our homepage. Um, so now we have our, the links are sitting at the bottom. Uh, and so you can click on the link and it will take you to um, the various spots or not, because it's apparently not working. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> we should be able to pull it up actually like on production and it should be okay. working since that got merged. Um, okay. Is... Why is this not working? I pulled... yeah. Maybe you're on a different branch or something. I don't know. It's always, whenever you have to demo something, it always... Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to welcome the live you. demos. I even like I made sure to pull we'll it. I like made sure it. I was testing it earlier. It was working fine. 
Yeah. I just popped the link in the chat. So okay. hopefully that one should really be working. Nice. Oh, look at that, it works. <laughs> um, yeah, so now when you click on the various um, nav links, you're rerouted to that page. Love it. And it's actually even better that you're um, demoing it like on production as opposed to on a local branch, because now we can see that now it works for everyone, um, not even just on your computer, so. Love it. And we can see the some of the styling um, with the nav links also um, that Patrick was talking about. Yeah, so like the um, underline is um, bolded so that it kind of gives you a visual cue of what page you're on. The other thing that we read that was really cool was that it is helpful for accessibility. So people who are using screen readers or other types of accessibility technology, um, it helps the accessibility technology tell them where they are um, and helps with that like breadcrumbing. Love it. Yeah, Perfect. we are going to do a um, learning module later um, in our cohort about accessibility, but it's really, really good to think about that stuff from the start because it's a lot easier to just build it in with the HTML than backtrack and try and add it. So wonderful. Great. Awesome. Um, thank you all for that. Appreciate it. Uh, good work. Um, are there any questions that anybody might have about this particular issue or way of implementation? Anything you got? By all means. Once, twice. Okay. Cool. Thanks, y'all. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. Um, I totally understand that. I don't like letting you know, I don't like making people watch me eat either. Um, cool. <laughs> so all right. Uh so second group, Nuria, Mira, whomever wants to kind of step up and do it, by all means. Floor is yours. Nuria, are you gonna share? Uh yeah, sure. I can share my screen uh to okay. Here's the uh that's our code uh, basically what we have to do is to uh, populate the list that was default list in firebase and mira are you gonna talk <laughs> oh. yeah basically there was a list that was being passed in as a, um as data into this uh component so we had to display on the elements of the list in here um, within the list item so that we can pass it to the list item and it displays um, the data. And um, like, I'm not sure, Nuria said she had pull, she, she did a git pull and she had her uh, Firebase set up, but in mine, I hadn't done that. So I had to figure out like the Firebase setup. So I went to the Firebase database and took all the configuration uh, that was in there and put it in the Firebase.js. Yeah. Yeah, in this file, we had to figure out this, I had to figure out this config. So we went to the Firebase database and figured it out. And then we realized that, oh, this shouldn't be was needed. So we did that and uh, the list works now. Yeah. Perfect, that's great. Yeah, this is like in production. So you can see it in production. Oh, it's, kind of... it's not working. <laughs> uh, you might have to do a control F5 on that because uh, it might be cached. Yeah, you can either do a hard refresh or open it incognito. Um, Let me go to where is the chat? Okay, here. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, here. And we use the map method to iterate the array of lists because we need to get the return each item. Uh, let's see, where is it? Um, 
No, 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 not here. Yeah. So we use the uh, uh, map array method. So, and use a list item that was already uh, imported and was already pre made for us. And we use the uh, because we use the map uh, array method, we had to have a key at the unique um, proposition, and we used item ID, and we had to have an item name. So, yeah. Cool. Very good. That's awesome. Um, I have a question for y'all. When you say that you had to look at Firebase and figure out, like, how to do that um those firebase configs like what was your process for that how did you figure out what to put and where to put it uh because like when we were doing it we realized that when we did the console log it gave me an error saying that firebase uh, configuration not available or something like that so then i i had done some firebase setup so i knew that oh we haven't set up the firebase so then um, I realized and I went back to the database and saw there was some Firebase config and there was a file in the project. So I just put all those and it said fill me in. So I just put all the um, configuration in there and it totally worked within a second. Yeah, we found it like con uh, linked to a database somewhere in the readme, I believe. Um, access to Firebase. No, no, if you go to Firebase, it's in your account. Oh, maybe I'll write that. Firebase. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right there. It mm -hmm. gives you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I think that <laughs> when I was a collabi and I had this issue, my my partner and I also didn't realize that there, <laughs> there was a template in the, um, you know, it's such a big code base that you're trying to get acclimated with. You don't know where to find all the files and where everything is, but then you learn, you can read documentation or something. And those error messages are really useful. Like that's a great, um, if, if there's an error, you know, something's wrong and <laughs> you can investigate from there. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah for me, the first thing was like, okay, this is asking to display name, where should I start? Understanding the code was the difficult part, like where, what needs to be implemented. Once I figured that out, then it was easy. Oh, I need to put it in here. So then it was really easy to, you know, do the code part. Yeah. Perfect, very cool. Yeah, that's a great job. Absolutely the right start to trying to figure out those issues is looking at the logs because that's the first first and most visible thing that you can usually look at other than the site itself. So absolutely, great job. Um, I think that was it. Was there any questions from the rest of the group uh, concerning this issue or how they went about trying to fix it? Nope, okay, cool. Um, do we want to jump into the learning module? I think Caitlin's got some stuff for us. Yep. Let me go ahead and find my screen that I'm going to share. Um, all right, here we go. So um, you all did a great job this week. I was talking to some of you about how, you know, the, these issues were, um, you know, maybe didn't take you a ton of time doing code, but it gave you a, a really good chance to start practicing some of the process around collaborating with the group. And, um, you know, that meant that you had some time to think about like how to do code review. Um, and so today we're going to talk about how to do code review now that you've done now that you've got a little bit of practice with it um, and kind of have some context for what we're doing. Um, so this is our intro to code reviews. Um, if you have any questions as I'm talking, um, feel free to jump in, or if you have any comments, um, feel free to jump in. Um, there will also be some time for discussion at the end. But um, today we're going to be talking about what is a code review, um, talk a little bit about what the code review cycle looks like, um, 
what makes a code review a great code review, both from like the perspective of someone creating the code and someone reviewing the code. Um, and then how can I help others review my code? How can I review others code? Um, and then we're gonna um, look a little bit in GitHub to see what, what some of those things look like. Um, all right, so what is a code review? Um, you all have done at least one code review now, if not more. Um, what do you think a code review is? Anyone have thoughts? It's just a process where you get like an extra set of eyes on your code to look for like debugging things or uh, potentially optimization um, possibilities. Love it. Yeah, definitely. It is definitely that. Any other thoughts on what code review like means to you? Uh, making sure that the code the code works the way it is supposed to work, and there are no issues with it, or there are no other like edge cases you you see maybe. Definitely, yeah, exactly, yeah. More eyes, um, like both of you are saying, like making sure that we've got all our bases covered. We're not overlooking anything. Um, yeah, so code review is definitely those things. It can be a lot of things. Um, so code review. Um, like we said, it's a conversation. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's my computer telling me that I need to <laughs> blink my eyes. Um, so it's a conversation about a set of changes. Um, so it's a conversation between the person making the changes and other people on the team. Um, it is a really good way to share knowledge um, and learn from others. Um, so no matter the experience level of any of the people that are collaborating, it's, you know, it's an opportunity to learn and to teach uh, each other about you know about code um it's a collaboration space where you can share your work and ask questions um it can help you improve as a developer um and it is really beneficial not just to individual developers but also to the team as a whole because it helps decentralize knowledge so that not just one person holds all of the information about one thing um for example, now we all know where we can find the Firebase configs because we've all looked at that PR, whether or not we created that code, we all have looked over it now and know where to find that information. Um, we can also share responsibility and improve our code base quality. Um, so yeah, everything we said and even more. Um, it's just like, it's, it's a really, really important part of coding is code review. Um, and sometimes it gets overlooked uh, on teams, you know, who are short staffed, but it really is, uh, worth prioritizing on a team. Okie dokie. So the code review cycle, uh, we just went through it uh, once as a team, um, but just to kind of summarize what it looks like, um, the first thing that we'll do is open a pull request. After we've made our code changes, then we'll open a PR. Um, next, we will receive feedback from members of our team if there's something that needs to be fixed um, or, you know, if there's something <clears throat> Like some of you were saying that could be optimized, um, you know, maybe if someone notices that there is something that could be better in terms of accessibility or something like you can get that kind of feedback in a um, in code review and then based on that feedback, you might need to make changes to your code. Oh my goodness i'm so sorry. <laughs> um, all right, and then um, once you've made changes you're gonna once again receive feedback on that you want to make sure that you are you know optimizing your code as much as possible and making changes as much as needed based on that feedback. Sometimes it might not be necessary, um, but sometimes you might need to, um, you know, there might be a few iterations of the code depending on the complexity. Once that's done, then eventually you will merge your code back to um, the main branch um, of, of, of your team's project. Um, so this is just kind of a general visualization of what that process looks like. Um, then the hundred dollar question like what makes a code review a great code review um so does anyone have thoughts about what might make something a good code review this is from the perspective of the person creating um, giving feedback on the code review or on the pull request what do you think would be like something to aim for as a reviewer? You probably want it to be clear, concise, and specific. Yeah, that's great. Uh, teachers often want to give that kind of feedback. Uh, and I, definitely, as, as a reviewer, yeah, you want it to be 
you don't be like, you're a terrible coder. Like that's not useful <laughs> feedback. Um, so yeah, definitely clear, concise and specific feedback. Any other thoughts about what you kind of want to aim for as a reviewer? That's really, I think that's a really helpful um, foundation and framework to think about um, code review. We want to like um, these bolded points, definitely like praise, default to approval, be kind and empathetic. Like we're not trying, we're, we're a team um, and we want to be like making sure that we're not, it can be really easy when you're reviewing code to just be like, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Like think like, you know, taking a red pen and just like crossing things out, but like that's not necessarily the most helpful um, way to receive feedback, especially, you know, if you're, if you're doing this asynchronously, like it can be easy for people to start to resent each other uh, with that style of feedback. Um, and so, yeah, giving like specific feedback is helpful. Um, the first point here, don't focus on stylistic changes. Um, generally as a team, you'll be using tools for these kinds of things like, um, you know, linting, um, uh, prettier, different, like there are, we can make our computers do this type of review for us and focus more on, um, on, you know, the bigger picture, uh, as it were. So you don't need to talk about like, oh, there should be a space or like tabs versus spaces. Developers will never agree on tabs versus spaces. So like, don't, don't argue about it <laughs> in code review, use tools for that. Um, number two, um, try out the feature locally or in a test environment just to make sure that it is working, um, you know, when you try and run the code. Um, yeah, see if you understand it. Um, try and uh, help others understand your your changes. Uh, there, we'll talk a little bit more about this uh, in depth. Um, and try and answer all the questions. So if someone is, um, if a reviewer is leaving a question for you, um, you know, don't just ignore it. Um, they might have a suggestion that you might ultimately not incorporate, um, but it should be a conversation, you know, like it should be like, oh, maybe this would be a better way of um, formatting this code. Um, and then maybe the other person is like, oh, that's a great, um, that's a really great point. For this reason, I think that it's better this way, um, but it, it really should be a conversation between both people is, is kind of the key thing here. Um, and again, like, praise, default to approval, be kind and empathetic. Um, like it can be, especially as a newer developer, it feels very vulnerable putting your code out there. Um, and so just trying to remember that and being um, a good team member, trying not to take things personally, trying not to be personal in how you're saying things, but just, you know, being helpful um, and thinking, remembering that you're part of a team, um, which I think I saw everyone giving code review this week was very positive and wonderful. You don't always have to, you know, give it a, a rubber stamp of approval like it's okay to give constructive feedback but just make sure you're doing so in a helpful manner um so next point is ooh, um running the code uh was just mentioned on the last slide that's like a really key part of doing code review as the reviewer um you want to make sure that it works um you want to look, of course, at the changes that are being made and make sure they make sense. But you also just want to make sure that it works on your machine um, for a few reasons uh, listed here. You know, it, it can help you get confidence and kind of better understand what types of changes are being made. Um, but it can also like be great to kind of point out where um, there might be a disconnect between what is said in the description of the PR and like what you're actually seeing, it can kind of give you more context and you can ask more thoughtful questions. Um, so I'm just gonna um, ask this question here at the bottom. So does anyone know where we can find the test environment for this project? Did anyone stumble across um, a way of seeing the other team's PR um, in a test environment? And it's okay if not, or you might not know what I'm talking about but I will show you in a second. <laughs> okay, I'm not seeing anyone jump in. So I'm just gonna, um, sh oh, go ahead. Um, I, well, I was trying to get the like Git Lens, Git PR running. And when I couldn't do that, then I just like, um, I just, I think I just copied it down and just ran it like on localhost. 
Yeah. Um, once I got the get lens, get PR, then it was super easy because then I could just click on the branch and just run at like NPM start and it like launched up, which was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, that is like a great way of practicing. Um, yeah, running things locally um, on your computer, um, using the extensions that George mentioned last week. Um, the uh, the GitHub extension for VS Code is super useful um, and GitLens as well. Um, and if any of you are having trouble setting that up, you can ask us. Caitlin also figured it out this week, so she can also help you. Um, but um, another way that you can check the code is that um, our project has GitHub Actions set up so that you see this little comment from the GitHub Actions bot is actually setting up a local um, a testing environment that you can check. So if I click on this link here, it will take me to the changes. You can see that this is just um, the changes from this PR, because if I go to the list page, I'm not seeing um, Mira and Nuria's changes. Uh, I'm just seeing the nav um, updates that Patrick and Caitlin made. So um, this is how I can kind of see just specifically, it looks just like our um, deployed project, but you can see it's got a little bit of extra um, stuff in the URL um, because it is specifically um, just a, like basically it's like a version of your local changes, but that anyone can access um, by following this URL. Um, so that is also helpful if you hadn't, if you haven't um, come across, if you haven't noticed that yet in our project. Um, that's another way that you can kind of test things. And a lot of um, teams will have some, some version of this um, set up uh, for their project. Um, okay. Any questions so far? I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. Cool. All right. Feel free to jump in if you have any. Um, so yeah, running the code, super useful. Doing it locally on your computer can help you gain familiarity um, with different nuances of your project um, and often there is also some kind of uh, deployed link you can follow as well. All right. Um, now, on the other side of the coin, like how can I help others review my code? So as a developer, how can I like create a PR to make it a little bit more accessible um, for the person reviewing it? Does anyone have thoughts on this side of the equation? Um, probably like comments throughout your code to make it readable for others definitely yeah if there's something super nuanced or like you know if you if you think something is a little confusing about why you did something um adding a, com a comment uh can be helpful so that um and that's a great point too because a comment in a pr uh versus a comment in code um code is going to be easier to find for someone um so if it's something that you think people will need to know in the future, um, putting it in the code can be a really helpful way of doing that. So people don't have to like slog through a bunch of PRs to try and find context about it. Um, yeah, I love it. Any other thoughts about how to make others, how to make it easier to review your code? I really liked the template for the PR, um, for the PR. It, yeah. was like, it was a bit of a like chore to get through, but once I got through it, I was like, oh, this is so nice on the flip side when you're having to review someone's code, um, being able to be like, okay, what exactly am I looking for um, and what and how do I know that it's been successful? Yeah, yeah, it, I totally agree. I um, When I joined my current team, they weren't using any kind of PR template. And so I was just using like, a version of the um, collab lab template. Um, and like, I got so many compliments on that. Like people were like, oh, it's so easy to review this because it's like really, you know, easy to digest. Um, so yeah, highly recommend. A lot of teams will have some kind of a template that they use, um, but if not, I think George mentioned that you use, like you have one that you use yourself um, maybe for PRs. Um, but yeah, anyway, like using some kind of template that makes it easy to understand what your changes are instead of just you know some vague description um, can be really really helpful um yeah i love it those are um, excellent suggestions um add a meaningful pr description that includes like something like that template where if you're making visual changes having screenshots makes it really easy to understand um 
which is also a point down here, but yeah, making sure that people understand what are you trying to accomplish? Like what changes did you make? Why did you make those changes? Um, so that when they then look at your code, they have context about what they're looking at and don't have to kind of piece it together um, through extrapolation. Um, whenever possible, writing meaningful commit messages also so that people, you know, when they're looking through each of your commits, they can understand, okay, this is the, you know, increment of change that is happening with this code change and, and understanding um, that as well. Um, Self-reviewing your code is also really helpful. So before you add other people um, to your PR, you can kind of look through it yourself through the lens of a reviewer and be like, okay, so this is, you know, this is what the, these changes are. Does this make sense? Um, you can even like explain why you did what you did. You can leave comments on your own PR to be like, oh, this is why I made this change. You, it might be a little bit, you know, you might not really understand why I made this change. This is why I did it this way. Or even asking questions again on your own PR, you can do that as well. Like, oh, like I, I did this this way. Um, this seemed like the best way I could find, but does anyone have any suggestions or, you know, whatever the case may be. So looking through your code, as a reviewer before handing it off to people is also a really um, useful way of doing that. Um, and then, as I mentioned, um, including images is, is really helpful, especially for front end work. Um, it, it's very visual, so it makes sense that uh, including images would be helpful. These are a couple of tools um, that are recommended. <clears throat> I personally use Loom and Zappy both, but there are a lot of tools you can use to kind of either record videos or GIFs or take screenshots um, and you know, describe things uh, in a more concise way than typing out a, a lot of explanation. Um, yeah, using, so I don't mean to, I just wanted to jump in real quick. Like using yeah, Loom is losing, using stuff like Loom specifically is like really, really great for demonstrating functionality, especially when you have like huge PRs that you might not necessarily want, or it might not be useful for everybody to kind of just go through like the 150,000 lines of code that you added in your PR um prs really shouldn't be that big but sometimes they are um <clears throat> and it's also great for people that aren't really friendly to code like product people um whenever you're talking to like a product manager um usually if you're in an organization they'll have product people that are like sending down some of these requirements and oftentimes they're they'll they'll benefit from having like a loom or something attached to either the pr or the ticket that is attached to the pr so that they can actually check out what it is that that was done because code probably doesn't mean a ton to them. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's really, it's just so useful for so many <laughs> different types of people. Just um, sometimes typing something up is, is the best way of explaining something, but a lot of times um, making it visual is really helpful um, for getting your point across or, and also like having um, like being able to talk through something also can, can help. <clears throat> um, okay. Love it. Um, so here we go. Um, so now we're going to take a look at a couple of these things, um, just how you might walk through a PR um, with a couple of examples. So this, um, if if someone's PR has multiple commits, um, stepping through commit by commit can be a helpful way of just digesting, you know, each stage of their PR. Um, and so we can look at this PR. Um, this is one from my my project when we did um, Collab Lab, but this is one that you can see there's six commits here um, and a bunch of changes. And if I wanted to look, um, I can see a list of commits here um, to kind of give me a sense of, okay, these are each of the steps that are happening. Um, I can also look here at files changed. Um, and right now I'm looking at changes from all commits. And so, you know, there's a bunch of stuff here kind of all at once. But if I wanted to step through each commit, I can kind of uh, either show all commits um, or I can go through and be like, okay, this was on, um, this was the first commit in the PR and I can look through. Um, and then when I'm done, I can look through the next commit um, and kind of go through it chronologically that way. Um, depending on, you know, if, if a PR is just one commit, then that's not gonna be useful. <laughs> uh, but sometimes like if there's like, I don't know, a, a ton of commits. Um, if someone is being thoughtful about the way they're committing and kind of doing their commits as small increments of work, um, it's a really helpful way of not getting too overwhelmed by lots of changes. Um, 
Another thing you can do when you're reviewing PRs um, is to, uh, yeah, uh, if, if something has a lot of um, files that have been changed, um, you can use um, the GitHub UI has a feature where you can kind of mark which files you've looked at, which I use a lot because uh, some people on my team just touch, you know, sometimes PRs just have a lot of files that are um, involved and you kind of get lost <laughs> in the changes. Um, so not that this was um, an overwhelming PR, this was, you know, an appropriate amount of files changed, but um, Nuria and Mira's PR did have six files changed. So if you were kind of looking at this PR and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm you know, six isn't that many, uh, but if you, you're like, oh, I'm feeling so lost in all of these changes, um, what you can do and what's really helpful to do is kind of look at each file that's been changed and like, okay, this is just like a white space change. Um, that is great. I will click that as viewed and now I can kind of, it'll collapse it for me um, and you can kind of see where you're at with um, the review and it's, it's super helpful. Um, sometimes I'm like, okay, this one's viewed. And like, maybe this is a file that I'm like, okay, I want to come back to that one. I'm just going to look through the other ones and like, oh yeah, that meant that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Like, okay, now I, I've looked at everything else. Now I can dive into this file a little bit more. Um, so that's a really helpful way of um, looking at a PR. Any questions about like the GitHub UI or like, did you all, I, I think that for some people, including myself, like when you're learning to um, to do peer review, it's a little bit confusing about where to find how to approve a PR. Uh, like it's not necessarily the most intuitive. I personally think that you have to like review changes. Um, oh, I'm not, this isn't an active PR, but like you all, I know you all found the approve button because you all approved each other's PRs. So that's awesome. But um, it can just make sure you remember that when you're reviewing a PR, you have to click the approve button. Um, otherwise it's just a comment. Um, and like, we wanna make sure that we're approving each other's PRs. Okie dokie. Let's go back to our slideshow. Um, so yeah, you'll as you get more practice doing PRs, some of you'll you'll find like the tools that are most helpful to you or like the features of GitHub that are most helpful to you in reviewing PRs. I think different people have different ways of um, like different preferences for reviewing them. Uh, like I mentioned last week, sometimes I like to use that GitHub issues extension so that I can review um, PRs in VS code, just because like, I like the way that I have my VS code set up and that's what I'm used to looking at for code changes. So sometimes it's useful to look at um, PRs in that environment, but you'll develop preferences um, as you get a little bit more experience. But if you have questions about how to do things as you're kind of learning the ropes, um, feel free to let any of the mentors know and we can, we can talk you through. I'm sure that like we all have different preferences too. Like I'm sure George's way of reviewing PRs is different than my way. Um, it's just, you know, a matter of personal preference. Um, all right. So um, now it is your turn to talk a little bit about PRs um, and kind of now that you've done at least one, um, we can talk a little bit about, maybe we'll go through these um, we'll step through these questions. So the first question is like, what has been your experience in the past with code reviews? Have you done code reviews um, prior to the Collab Lab? And what has been your experience with that? Has anyone, like show of hands, has anyone done PRs before the Collab Lab? Okay, a couple of you. Um, and like, what has been your experience with that? Has it been positive, negative, like overwhelming? What's it been like? The Wild West. <laughs> It was mostly just like group projects. So we didn't go through a full PR review thing. We just kind of like put up the PR and the person would just be like, yeah, good, 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 good. And then we would wind up with like huge like errors being like, there are conflicting changes <laughs> and you'd have to like back it up and like redo it again. So, yeah. Yeah, and that's a really great point for, um, again, why like just kind of approving, a lot of people do this, but it's really, we really want to make sure we're not just blindly approving PRs um, because sometimes that can cause problems. <laughs> and also you want to make sure you understand like what changes are happening. Um, yeah, anyone else um, previous experience with PRs and code reviews? Yeah, I have done a PA, I have done PR and group projects as Caitlin said, but um, 
there was no template. There was nothing like, yeah, I pushed it to GitHub. Can you just review it? And um, because the teammates, we were together doing it. So it was not like, okay, this is not working or that's not working. It's just like, okay, we had to do it for the sake of doing it and we did it and now it's working fine and you just approve that. that that's that was my experience it was not like the pr that we did this week so it was a little bit like i was a little bit lost first then uh, as you said to review changes where it was and all i had a little bit struggle but then when i got to understood where to do it then it was okay yeah that's awesome maybe maybe that's a good transition then into how did it feel this week to do code reviews um yeah, how how did it compare or just in general, how did you feel about doing code review? Um, it was a learning experience for me from how different the, the code reviews that I did and how teams work in in real, you know, <laughs> jobs. So it was completely a new experience and it was a fun and learning experience. Yeah. Um, how about uh, Patrick or Nuria? Do you have any thoughts about either of those first two questions? Um, in the past, with like 100 devs, we have like some group projects that we had to do, you know, pull requests, but it was pretty chaotic and um, we probably would do it together. So there really wasn't anything we'd have to like worry about. Um, uh, but in regards to this week's code reviews, I think, uh, I mean, everything went fine. Um, I think when the issues get a little bit more complex, it might be a little bit different because um, the other partners won't have like insight on what we're doing really. So, I mean, I think that's when the template and all of the things that we just went over will really be beneficial to our, to the group. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, yeah, we're kind of like using our training wheels at first, and then like as we get more complex, like we'll really need to lean more on those resources that we're that we're learning about. Um, Nuria, any thoughts about either of those questions? Uh, I had a great experience with PR in my like boot camp. We did like hackathons with uh, like all younger developers and senior students paired together to do a project. So senior students kind of guide us through into PR and we had to review it. And if there are any mistakes, we had to find the solution or the point out, okay, I see you have this mistake, it gives us error. So look into that like direction and it was great. Yeah, we use the PR templates and everything. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you've had positive experience elsewhere too, using those templates and like, yeah, even if it's a different template, it can be really helpful. Yeah. Um, nice. And um, the last question here is just kind of like, how has it felt over the last week or in previous experiences to have your code reviewed? Um, so not, not just looking at other people's code, but like, do you feel like <laughs> I am overly sensitive? And so if someone is not like lots of smiley faces with their code review, I'm like, oh no, they hate me. <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, you, you get used to it a little bit more, but have you all felt um, stressed putting your code up for review? Um, or is it kind of, do you think that the template is also helpful to you as a um, as the developer? How How have you felt about putting your code out there for others to look at? Um, so far, I don't, I wasn't too nervous about anything because our task was so simple. Um, but I might have a little bit of a different perspective for a collabi. Um, I am very anxious to do my first pull request for my internship. That's for sure. Um, yeah, so. For your internship, are are there any like do they have a template um for PRs? I know you mentioned it's a smaller team, so yeah, that might not be the no. case. No, um, I haven't gotten to that point, so maybe they do have something. But um, yeah, it's definitely going to be a learning experience. Yeah, I think anytime you're joining a new team and doing your first PR, I think most people are terrified. Um, so at least take comfort in that. Like it. 
everyone feels that way. Um, and like, hopefully, you know, if you're on a team with a lot of like with a um, with a culture of trust, like hopefully, you know, you can try not to internalize too much. But yeah, it, it can be very stressful. Um, not everyone feels that way, but um, I definitely do. I feel you. <laughs> um, anyone else have any thoughts about how it has felt for your code to be reviewed? It was anxious, stressful at first. And I remember a couple of first PRs I did like lots of mistakes and lots of constructive comments, but I understand it's a learning experience, learning curve. And it now it's I feel good. Good. That's so awesome. Go can do mistakes and PR requests, it's to help set of other eyes to review to make sure you're in production won't be a huge mess. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a really healthy attitude to have about it is that it is intended to be a step of the process to help catch um, mistakes. So it is expected that there will be, you know, feedback, um, not always, but sometimes. Um, and seeing it as a learning experience, um, that's been a helpful mindset for me to have as well is like, if someone gives me feedback, just try and, you know, use that as a okay cool like maybe I can learn more about this thing that they're talking about I can ask questions about it um like one time I got a comment from uh, someone in my department that my PRs always have a ton of comments and I was like yeah that's because I'm having like a full-on conversation <laughs> there like I'm like asking like follow-up questions and like oh cool like this is really helpful um whereas some you know some people might not necessarily like just be like okay I, I fixed it like thanks for the feedback um which is also fine but um you know, seeing it as a learning experience is useful, I think, for like getting over the mental hurdle of like the vulnerability um, of doing a PR. So yeah, that's awesome. Um, all right, I think then, yeah, that brings us to the end of um, this learning module. There are um, some resources here that are super helpful that I will link to. You'll have these slides afterwards. Um, in particular, I really like this article here, how to make your code reviewer fall in love with you. Um, and I just wanted to highlight one point about that from that article. Um, this, the golden rule is to value your reviewer's time. I think that is like really key in doing good code review and like why it can be really helpful to invest a little bit of time in creating a thoughtful PR because it'll be easier for the other person. If you're thinking like me as one person, it's taking me like five minutes of time to fill this out. It'll save all these other people, you know, however much time in getting context. Um, I think that's a really, really helpful um, way of thinking about code review. Um, and yeah, there's a few other, there's uh, lots of really useful articles um, about code review. And there's also a couple of additional resources that I linked here. Um, Conventional commits um, is a little bit of what we were talking about of like having helpful commits that make sense to your reviewer. Conventional comments is another thing that I really like to do. Um, I've, I've started trying to do um, where you're kind of like making it clear to the person like, oh, this is a suggestion. You don't need to necessarily um, take it or like this is like, I'm just nitpicking. This is like not a major issue. I've I've found that dealing with, um, especially if you're dealing with people like remotely, it can be helpful just to have some of this context. Um, so if you're interested in that, that is linked. Um, and also I love using GIFs. Um, and this is a really fun uh, Chrome extension that just like lets you put GIFs into, sorry, uh, into PRs um, or like when you're reviewing PRs, uh, it lets me do, like I added a little GIF here. Um, it just like gives you a little, Giphy pop up. So I love that um, just for fun. Um, but yeah, any questions um, before I hand it back over to George um, to talk about our issues for the week? Cool. All right. Yeah, you'll have um, access to all of those resources and feel free to ask questions in Slack. But if not, I will pass it back to George. Cool. Thank you. Um, so there's only like about seven minutes left. So I'm going to very briefly go through the issues for this week. Um, I guess the first, yeah. Uh, so let me see. Can I share my screen? Hold on. <clears throat> Make sure it's big enough for people to see. Okay. Everybody see see my screen? Yep. Cool. 
Um, so this week, we're going to be doing a couple things. The first is we're going to be setting up the ability to add new shopping lists to the app. So the summary is right here. A shopping list is a set of items associated with a specific three-word three, three word token. We need to allow users to start new lists so they can save things they need to buy. To start a new list, we'll need to do a few things. Generate a new unique token. Uh, save the token to local storage. Uh, show the user the list view. Uh, up to this point, the app has rendered the items in the list associated with the token my test list uh, before we can allow users to make new lists we have to stop showing them uh, this test list uh, so the acceptance criteria is right here so the collab lab slash shopping list utils is added as a dependency to the project um, and the npm setup mm -hmm. is actually right here and you can you know look through that um, as you need to um, <clears throat> the string my test list in app.jsx is replaced with null, so users are not automatically subscribed to any list. Um, if a user doesn't already have a token, uh, a button in the home component allows them to create a new list. Um, clicking the button generates a new token and saves it to local storage using the set list token function in app.jsx. Uh, once the token has been created and saved, the user is redirected to the list view. Um, if a user already has a token, I don't know why it says that, uh, they are automatically redirected to the list view. Uh, so there's some couple of notes down here. Uh, the generate token function from the shopping list utils package should be used to generate the token. More information in the package um, is in its documentation, which is yeah so same thing right there on the npm thing so you can check that out if you needed to um the import statement looks a little bit like that right there um the set list token function takes one argument the new list token uh, eventually the welcome slash home page will look like this wireframe it's good for your whole team to look at the wireframe now thank you um so that's so this is the, what the what it should kind of look like just a general idea. So that link is actually also in the issue. So like, if you're not sure what, you know, you should be seeing on the screen, it should look a little bit like this. Um, uh, for this story, it's sufficient just to have a simple create list button. Although you are not required to save the token to Firestore, some teams have opted to also save the token to Firestore when generating a token. That's great. Um, cool. So this, is there any other things I want to talk about here? Uh, so yeah, the links to all the like the stuff there, that are needed are right here, right in the issue, if you needed. So uh, to this next issue. So as a user, I want to add a new item to my shopping list so I can start recording purchases. Um, users need to be able to add items to their shopping list. To do this, the add item view should present them with a form that allows them to enter two things, the name of the item and an estimate of when they think they will need to buy that, buy that item. Uh, the readme file for the shopping list api will be helpful as you this feature just kind of groups through this uh, so the home view displays a form that allows them to enter the name of the item and select how they anticipate needing to needing to buy it uh, there will be three choices soon kind of soon and not soon um, and these are the corresponding days for those um, the input that accepts the name of the item has a semantic label element associated with it. Uh, the user can submit this form with both the mouse and the enter key. Uh, when the user submits the form, they see a message indicating that the item either was or was not saved to the database. And data related tasks, uh, the console log and the add item function in source slash API slash Firebase JS is replaced with a function that adds a new document to the Firestore database. Uh, that function will be imported from the Firebase slash Firestore module. Uh, the user's soon slash not soon slash kind of soon choice is used to calculate the next purchase dates. A um, couple notes. Uh, when this feature is implemented correctly, uh, new items will automatically show up in the list view because stream list item gets new data from the Firestore every time there's a change. You will you will know your labels correctly implemented if you click on the label and the keyboard focus moves to the related input. And uh, there's a link here for the MDN documents on that. 
Um, users will be able to submit the form uh, with the entry key if you listen for the right JavaScript event on the right element. If you're adding an on key down listener anywhere, you might be overcomplicating things. Um, and this is the wireframe for what that feature should look like. Are there any questions at all uh, concerning these two? Nope, easy enough. Good, cool. Uh, if there are, by all means, uh, throw those in the Slack. Uh, we will be trying to pay attention to those. So this week, the pairs are going to be uh, Mira and Caitlin and Maria and Patrick. Um, so do either of these issues kind of jump out to anybody um, as things we might want to tackle? Okay, so I will assign Mira and Caitlin to this uh, issue number three, and Nuria and Patrick will get issue number four. Sound good? Cool. All right. Um, that's, that's, all, that's all I need. Um, cool. Um, I think uh, that was it. We're actually right at time. So I don't want to keep anybody for longer than they need to. Thanks, George. Thanks for uh, <laughs> quickly running through that. I did, working off one screen makes me uh, not know what time it is but yeah thank you for running us through those um like you said if we have any questions pop them in the slack um but yeah we will set you free to work on those issues this week thanks everyone thanks so much yeah thanks Bye, thank you good luck yeah